If you have picked up a magazine lately or tuned into the fashion forecast, you already know boho is the look of the season. Call it exotic, trippy, outrageous, whatever you call it, bohemian-inspired style is a fun look you'll be seeing everywhere this spring. But the boho way not only is a fashion trend, it's also a way of life. Author Lauren Stover knows that more than most. She has written the book Bohemian Manifesto, A Field Guide to Living on the Edge. And she is here in all of her bohemian glory this morning. Welcome. Welcome, Sandra. I brought you a peacock feather, symbol of bohemian splendor. Ah, thank you. I need a little bohemian a, splendor a in, my, in my life. I appreciate <laughs> that. Now, if anyone knows boho, it's you. You've kind of been involved from the get-go. I, I have bohemian, a bohemian parents. My mom wore water buffalo sandals. My dad is a jazz musician, so I lived the life. He tuned pianos, fixed the cars. Now, really, it is a, it's a culture all uh, in its own. We're seeing, we mentioned on the fashion pages, the look, which we're going to be uh, checking out right now. But it's, it's a culture, isn't it? It's a complete lifestyle. It's a passionate way of living. In my book, I actually talk about five types of bohemians. You might be more bohemian than you think. There's a quiz in the back. Uh -huh. You could be a zen, a beat, a nouveau, a gypsy, or a dandy. And it's the gypsy bohemian that we're seeing most expressed in fashion right now. And you see a lot of uh, stars and a lot of models uh, kind of wearing the boho look, going the boho style. Who in our culture now do you think best exemplifies that? Well, you're seeing, uh, for example, Drew Barrymore, Sienna Miller. You see them wearing jeans, floppy hats, clothing that's reminiscent of Janis Joplin. It's sort of a, a throwback to the 60s in a a little bit, but it's also more global. And it's really a style that's, there's Sienna Miller there, that's individualistic. I mean, it's not trendy, and it's really hard to define. Well, I think real bohemians aren't running into the top fashion store and buying a complete look from a fashion designer. They look as though they've put it together themselves by traveling around the world, you know, picked up a skirt in Mexico and a poet shirt in Romania or they could be traveling on eBay. You know, you don't actually have to physically travel. So it really is an look. eclectic look. And it's doing it yourself with, and expressing your own poetry and your own personality. And that means not shopping at the major department stores. It means trying to find some of the hidden jewels in our city. And I know that you have some ideas on places to go for people in San Diego who may be interested in uh, spicing up their look. Well, I called my little sister Tessa, and she actually said that you can get some great down and dirty looks, well, down and dirty shopping is at the Salvation Army. It's not glamorous, and you have to look for treasures. You can find great things at Flashbacks for vintage clothing, or you could go to anthropology.com, and they have a wonderful sort of poet society. And we do have that to show our viewers, the information on the board to show them where they can go in San Diego. And you're also seeing it on the, uh, in the catalogs, too. Some of the, some of the trendy stores, some of the big department stores are actually showing you that look as well. You can put it together yourself with a little bit of something from your grandmother's closet, from your closet. You can go to a main department store, you know, a regular department store, but the idea is to personalize it. Now, the book isn't all about fashion. It really is about the bohemian way of life. Why did you decide to write it? I had written about bombshells, and after studying these exuberant creatures, decided to work on something closer to home and talk about, you know, I live in a fourth floor walk-up, and the pets run wild in the house. There are no cages. And I thought, this creative splendor, this, it's, you know, bohemianism isn't all just dirt and poverty and living on a houseboat, or, you know, it isn't even just a fourth floor walk-up. But I thought there was something absolutely beautiful about the passion and the poetry and the artistic freedom and the adventure and the rebellion of the bohemian. And I've studied them from 1800s till now. And you've and lived it, too. Yeah, you've definitely. Too. No heat in the winter happens frequently to the bohemian. Now, are you in the East Coast? You're in New York? I'm in New York, so heat in the winter is, it's crucial. is, a, is a very <laughs> bohemian thing to lack. Wow. Well, it's a, a getting great reviews. The Bohemian Manifesto, A Field Guide to Living on the Edge. You're going to be at a book signing. I will be at Barnes & Noble on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Someone is uh, David Moyes playing ukulele while I read. And I think I might read about dust because Bohemians aren't big on housekeeping and I explain the, the beauty and the poetry of dust in your home. Laren Stover, thank you so much thank for you. coming and thanks for the, uh, the ostrich feather. Thank you. I need a little zen in my life. <laughs>